Okay, AMP Warners, this is Dr. Grogne, and I'm doing quickly trying to get videos together to help with your histology lab using some of these models that have lots of different tissue types represented so we can review some of the characteristics of epithelial, connective, muscle, nervous tissue, and where they might be located. So this entire model is supposed to represent the esophagus for the top part, the stomach for the second part, small intestines, and then large intestines. All right, so it's one big tube. And what's interesting, again, if you're looking at the innermost layer is our esophagus, the innermost layer has multiple cells. So we know that this innermost layer of our esophagus is full of stratified squamous epithelium. And underneath, there will be a little bit of areolar connective tissue. And then as we kind of expand out, there will be some maybe more robust mix of dense irregular connective tissue or dense or reticular connective tissue um, to give us room for some of our muscle that has to show up here and some of what's shown here, maybe some of our glands that are going to help keep the esophagus wet. Okay, remember some of these sweat glands that are represented, they are a, going to be a one big tube that's coiled and from our book, I think it said it was a stratified cuboidal epithelium is lining the tubing um, and providing the, the sweat that then is pushed in and, and um, onto the surface here. All right, so we see connective tissue. We see there's red and blue. So we know the connective tissue is where the blood vessels, the big ones, and then they divide into smaller capillaries and they'll get close to our epithelial lining. We see there's smooth muscle here. There's no stripes. These cells are coming out at us. These kind of um, little worm looking cells laying together form a long layer or a circular layer then we get more potentially dense irregular connective tissue okay when we move to the stomach and we had a stomach model we know we transitioned to simple columnar we know that these little push downs and these little circle areas that the these are going to be glands they're a little bit less maybe organized than the ones we just saw up here that were sweat glands but if you kind of go from the the top to the bottom they form a little bit of a ditch and the cells around them are going to specialize into producing the secretions that are going to help make your gastric juices Okay, and we still get areolar connective tissue behind. We still get some dense mix of dense irregular reticular tissue to give us space to put our um, our big vessels, our nerves, and uh, other items. And then we go into muscle, more dense irregular connective tissue. And then again, here you start to see little tiny cells. I don't know if you can kind of see the little squareness. Um, technically, these are going to be your visceral peritoneal um, membrane cells. So these represent simple squamous cells and then some of the connective tissue directly behind. All right, so as we keep going through, we see simple columnar, simple columnar. We still see that mix of dense irregular and maybe some reticular fibers giving some open space for some of the bigger items. We see our smooth muscle. We continue to see this is that visceral peritoneal membrane. And we continue to see that we kind of have some glands um, if we can get into a bigger magnification, remember that there will be goblet cells, there will be those mucosa cells secreting and helping as well to keep everything moist and wet in these areas. So that model, again, is our digestive tract. We're not worried about each segment quite yet and what's going on and why and what's being produced. We just want to go through and review what tissues are represented 
represented. And again, look, remember that we're looking for epithelial tissues, our simple and our stratified types. We're looking for connective tissues, our regular connective tissues versus specialized connective tissues, our three types of muscle. And then we're looking again on that outer lining, reminding ourselves of when to expect the visceral peritoneal membrane, if this was along the visceral pleural membrane, if this was uh, the cardiac tissue, the visceral pericardial tissue membrane. All right, there we go.